Lepo pozdravljene gledalke in gledalci. Z nami je danes ponovno Peter Herbeck, ki je podpredsednik misijonske organizacije Renewable Ministries, že več kot 30 let aktivno sodeluje pri evangelizaciji in katoliški prenovi v ZDA, Kanadi, Afriki in v Vzhodnji Evropi. Peter je sovoditelj tedenskega televizijskega programa The Choices We Face, izzivi, s katerimi se soočamo, prav tako vodi dnevno radijsko vodajo Fire on Earth, ogen na zemlji, pogosto je govornik na raznih konferencah in avtor knjig When the Spirit Comes in Power, v moči svetega duha, prevedena tudi v slovenščino, in When the Spirit Speaks, ko duh spregovori. Hello, Peter, welcome. Hello. Yes, hello, it's good to be with you. Hello, torej jaz bom med drugim tudi prevajalec. Peter, would you say a prayer for this meeting? Sure. Today. Sure. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for the gift of your beloved Son, Jesus. We thank you for this holy week and your grace. Zahvaljujeme se ti za ta sveti teden, za tvojo milost. Pomaga nam, gospod, da stopamo po postopinjah tvojega sina. Za njegovo čast in slavo. In prosim te, gospod, blagoslove vse tiste, ki so danes tukaj z nami. Blagoslovi njihove zakone. Blagoslovi njihove otroke. And release the power of your Holy Spirit upon us as we exalt you and learn from you. In sprosti moč svetega duha na nas, gospod, ko te tako povzdigujemo, gospod. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, pray for us. Sveti Jožev, strah hudobnih duhov, prosi za nas. Amen. Amen. Pogovarjali se bomo danes o najstnikih in družinski molitvi. Torej, prvo vprašanje, ki je tukaj napisano za gospoda Pitra, je, kakšne so vajne izkušnje, torej njegove, skupaj z njegovo ženo, ob odraščanju vajnih otrok v vašem družinskem okolju? So, Peter, this is the first question that I just wrote in Slovenian and read. What is your experience of growing up your teenagers in your family? So, what is your experience with teenagers growing up in a family of faith? Okay, good question. It's an adventure. To je prava avantura. Yeah. So we have four, we have four children. Imava z ženo imava štiri otroke. Two boys, two girls. Dva fanta in dve rekleti. Now their ages are, the youngest is 27. Torej sedaj so toliko stari. Najmlajši je star 27 let. And the oldest is 32 or 33, I can't remember. In najstarejši je 32 ali 33, celo spomnim se, ne. And every, you know, one thing I would say for sure is each child is different. In nekaj, kar zagotovo lahko povem je, da je vsak otrok drugačen. Each child provided a greater or lesser challenge. Vsak otrok, torej vsak izmed njih je bil večji ali manjši izziv. Yeah. And so... In our experience, my wife Debbie and I, our experience of raising our our young our children during the teenage years were the most challenging. In se veda ženo Debbie sva izkusila da je bila uzgoja naših otrok te daj ko so bili najstniki v bistvu to je bil največji izziv. For different reasons. In se veda iz različnih razlogov. Now, as background, I would say one of the things that helped us. Lahko bi rekel takole, da ena od stvari, ki je nam zelo pomagala, in seveda z Debi sva na tem delala, ko so otroci bili še manjši, mlajši, torej midva z Debi sva poskušala vzpostaviti odnose z družinami, ki so imeli otroke stare toliko kot mi who shared the same values that we, Debbie and I, had for our children. In so se veda z nami delili vrednote, ki so jih jaz in Debbie imela, glede v zgoje otrok. 
So we were raising our kids in the context of a little broader support network that included some of their friends and families. Na nek način so v bistvu mrežno vzgajali otroke, torej mrežno v stilu, da smo se družili in ustvarjali odnose z ljudmi, ki so imeli otroke in enake vrednote kot mi. So that our kids understood that when Herbecks, when the Herbecks make decisions about how to live, that we're not the only ones doing it. In želeli smo, da otroci vidijo, da ko se Herbekovi odločajo kot družina, niso edini ki se tako odločajo, obstajajo tudi druge družine, s katerimi seveda se družimo, brati in sestre, ki se prav tako odločajo, sprav tako z otroci. Now, we did say to the kids, sometimes the Herbecks may be the only ones who are doing it that way, and we're still going to insist on doing it that way. In seveda rekli smo tudi otrokom, morda so res Herbekovi tisti, ki včasih edini to počnejo, ampak samo, da veste, to bomo še naprej počeli. Ja. And so I think for us the the transition from elementary school to high school. Tore pri nas je bilo takole prehod iz osnovne šole v srednjo šolo. Had these factors that we worked on. Je se vedo uključoval ta dejstva na katerih smo morali delati, oziroma na katerih smo delali. Supportive relationships. Tore odnosi u katerih se podpiramo. The right schools prave šole, torej tiste šole, ki spravi s pravimi vrednotami. The right coaches in sports. Pravi treneri pri športih. We would have a regular family prayer. Imeli smo redno družinsko molitev. Sometimes just a rosary, you know, daily. Včasih je to bil samo rožni venec, dnevni rožni venec. We realized that we needed to have spiritual conversations. Torej, spoznali smo, da smo se morali pogovarjati o duhovnem. That we're answering the why questions, not just the what to do questions. In seveda, morali smo se pogovarjati o duhovnosti tako, da smo lahko odgovorili na vprašanje zakaj, ne pa samo na vprašanje, kako to storiti ali kako to živeti. And that we would try to elevate them to having more adult level conversations if they could. In poskušali smo pri otrocih doseči, da so v bistvu se pogovarjali na malo zrelejši stopnje. Ja, so, we, I had to make a personal adjustment. Jaz sem se seveda moral osebno nekoliko prilagoditi, spremeniti. To my preferences. Sorry, just one minute. I had to do things that I would rather not do. Thank you. Torej, jaz sem se moral nekoliko spremeniti in prilagoditi v tem procesu. Se pravi, moral se malo zamenjati svoje poglede na to, kar si želim delati ali kar si ne želim delati. Tri things were challenging for me. Mene, se pravi, meni so tri stvari predstavljale i velik izziv. I had to listen more and talk less. Moral sem v tistem trenutku več poslušati in manj govoriti. I had to be willing to... Meet when the time was right. Moral sem počakati in se srečati z otroci, srečati v odnosih, takrat, ko je čas bil pravi. Sometimes the best time to talk to a child, my children, was late at night. Včasih je bil najboljši čas, da bi se z otrokom pogovoril, že pozno po noči. And so, and then I would have to, the third thing was, I would try to answer their questions um, in a way that they understood that I was listening. Torej, še tretja stvar, ki je pa bila zelo pomembna, je, da sem poskušal na njihova vprašanja odgovoriti na način, da so dojeli, videli, doživeli, da jih resnično poslušam. And that I heard what they were saying. In seveda, da sem tudi slišal in razumel to, kar so me vprašali ali govorili. I remember one time my daughter, my youngest. Torej, spomnim se, da je nekoč moja najmlajši otrok, moja hčirka. Her name is Rachel. Njeno ime je Rachel. She has a big personality. Ima zelo močen karakter. And a strong will. In zelo močno voljo. And when she was in high school, whatever she felt inside would come out of her mouth. In ko je bila v srednji šoli, se je takole se obnašala vse tisto, kar je bilo 
v njej, v njenih mislih v srcu, je prišlo direktno ven na usta. In some ways I didn't like. In to, da ni imela dlake na jeziku, mi preprosto včasih ni bilo všeč. And in some ways she shouldn't have done. In seveda, v določenih trenutkih bi tudi ona morala brzdati jezik. We were having a conversation late at night. In nekoč smo se pozno po noči sa se pogovarjala. And she was sharing her heart and her feelings that she was having. In seveda je z menoj delila vse tisto, kar jo je kar je imela v sebi, vsa čustva, vse, kar je imela v srcu. And I was being impatient. In jaz sem pa bil nepotrpežljiv. And I gave her a quick answer to tell her what to do. In tedaj sem mi zelo na hitro odgovoril, kaj mora storiti, da bi to stvar popravila, naredila. And she said to me, you already knew the answer you were going to give even before I started talking. In potem mi je takole očitala, Vedel si odgovor, kako mi boš torej odgovoril, si že vedel pred in sem te sploh vprašala. And you really didn't listen to me. In v bistvu me sploh nisi zares poslušal. And I thought for a moment, and I said, you're right, that's true. In za trenutek sem zastal, premislil in rekel, ja, res je, prav imaš. I had to tell the truth. I didn't want to talk that late. I was tired, I didn't want to listen. Listen to her, and I mainly wanted to just tell her what to do so I could go to bed. In se veda bilo je pozno, nisem se mogel več pogovarjati, bil sem utrujen in moral sem povedati, priznati resnico. Takrat več nisem bil pripravljen poslušati, želel sem samo odgovoriti, kaj mora storiti, da bi jaz lahko šel spati. So that third thing I had to do was to learn how to be honest myself. Torej, tretja stvar, ki sem se jo moral naučiti, je pri sebi, kako biti resnično do konca odkrit pri sebi, pred seboj. And that I needed for her to know that I was willing to acknowledge mistakes I made so she could acknowledge the mistakes she made. In bilo je potrebno, da ona v meni vidi pripravljenost, da priznam svoje napake, zato da bi ona bila pripravljena potem tudi pri sebi priznati svoje napake. And for her in particular, I had to show her that I did really want to be with her. I wanted to be with her and I wanted to hear what she had to say. And there's something in me that had to change. In recimo, pri njej se je to pokazalo. Pri njej sem resnično moral dokazati, da sem želel biti ob njej in da sem jo želel poslušati. In zato sem se tudi sam moral spremeniti. V meni se je nekaj moralo spremeniti. She was the hardest child for me to raise. Za me je ona bila, torej za me je bilo najteže vzgajati prav njo. I argued with her more. We had more arguments than any of my other kids. Z njo sem se bolj kregal, torej bolj sva se sporekla večkrat kot z vsakim drugim, z vsemi ostalimi otroci. And today we are very close. In danes sva si zelo blizu. It took some time. Sveda bilo je potreben čas. So that's an example of the kind of things that we, I had to learn and the kind of priorities we had to shift and at that time. No, to je recimo eden od primerov, kaj sem jaz moral pri sebi storiti in kako smo včasih morali preprosto prioritete spremeniti. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for this answer. So, I will, can I go to the next answer? Did you want to say anything more about this? No, and one other thing too, I had to deal, I had to be careful about my anger. This was a weakness for me. Torej, še eno stvar bi rad povedal. In se sicer moral sem biti pozoren in se ukvarjati tudi z svojo jezo. To je pač moja slabost. Because if I got frustrated or I didn't think she was listening, I my volume would go up. Jeste, ko sem mislil, da me morda ona več ne posluša ali da ni pozorna na to, kar govorim, sem pa jaz postal glasnejši. And her volume would go up. In potem je ona postala glasnejša. And we would be shouting sometimes at each other. In potem so včasih preprosto drug na drugega kričala. And I had to admit that that was totally useless. In moram priznati, da je to bilo popolnoma neuporabno. And I was mostly frustrated. In večino časa sem bil bistvu frustriran. So I knew something in me had to change also. In takrat sem se seveda zavedel, da se tudi v meni nekaj mora spremeniti. So, okay. Tako, torej, to je to. Naslednje vprašanje za gospoda Pitra. Kako jih navdihniti, torej, kako najst nekaj nagovoriti za Boga? So, the next question is, how to inspire them for God? How to inspire... Um, teenagers for God. Number one, without question, number one is how you live yourself. 
Torej, brez, brez nadaljnih vprašanj in odgovorov na prvem mestu je to, kako sam živiš svoje versko življenje. Are you walking the walk? Ali hodiš za Jezusom, za res hodiš za Jezusom. A few years ago, we were doing, my wife and I were speaking at a big church in the area here. Pred, uh, a few years ago, right? Yeah, a few years ago, yeah, the big, the big event, yeah. Torej, pred nekaj leti sva ženo na velikem dogodku tukaj blizu svojega doma v veliki cirkvi spregovorila. And the priest was interviewing us about raising our kids. In takrat je duhovnik naj jo spraševal o vzgoji najnih otrok. And my oldest daughter had just come from work and she came to the event. I didn't know she was coming. In moja najstarejša včerka je tedaj že končala tisti dan v službi, prišla je v cirko poslušati, nisem vedel, da je bila tam. And the priest said to me, asked me the question, uh, what do you think, um, what was the biggest impact you had on your children? How did it happen? In seveda, duhovnik me je vprašal tole vprašanje. Kaj, misli, kaj mislita, torej, kaj misliš, uh, kje si najbolj vplival na svoje otroke? Kje je bistvu tvoja vera imela največji učinek na tvoje otroke? To help them um, in, uh, receive the faith, to help them walk with the Lord. Da si jim s tem pomagal, da so sami potem lahko hodili za Jezusom. So then the priest said, uh, turn to my daughter. He said, oh, I see your daughter came. I'm going to ask her the question. In potem je seveda duhovnik opazil, da je moja hči v publiki, da je prišla in je rekel tako, da no, bom kar njo vprašal sedaj to vprašanje. I said, ok, can I ask her? <laughs> in jaz sem seveda rekel, seveda v redu, kar vprašajo. She said that um, when she was in high school, in ona je takole rekla, pra, rekla je, ko sem bila v srednji šoli, the thing she remembers most, stvar, ki se jo najbolj spomni, is when she would get up for school in the morning, je, ko se je zjutraj zbujala pred šolo, like at, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, morda nekje o pol sedmih, sedmih zjutraj, She said she has an image in her mind that every morning I saw my father in his in the corner in the living room praying in his prayer chair holding his Bible. Rekla je da je vsakič zjutraj videla svojega očeta v kotu kako na, sto, na stolu moli z svojo svojim svetim pismom v roki. To je slika podoba ki jo ima v glavi. And she said it 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 always stuck with her and then my my daughter-in-law who married my oldest son Torej, to je slika, ki je ostala njej v glavi. Potem pa seveda um, žena uh, mojega sina, torej. Now, he was the more quiet guy, and it was hard to know what he was thinking and what he was believing. Moj sin je pa, veste, tak bolj tih človek, introvertiran. Uh, težko je bilo včasih vedeti, kaj misli, o čem razmišlja. But at uh, 6 a.m. in the morning in my home, my daughter-in-law sent a text to me and Debbie. Ampak ob šesti zjutraj je seveda uh, njegova žena meni pa Debi poslala sporočilo. And she and her, and her husband Mike, my son, had three little children. In, torej imela sta uh, sin in njegova žena sta imela, imata tri otroke. And she said, I'm standing in my kitchen at in ona, six in the... In ona je takole napisala v sporočilo. Ob šesti zjutraj stojim v kuhinji. At six in the morning... And, and she said, I'm so grateful. My husband, your son, is early this morning was up and he's having his prayer time in the corner in the living room in his chair, holding his Bible. And he does this every morning. And this is a great blessing. And she said, I have tears in my eyes today. I wanted to say thank you. Se pravi, nekega jutra ob šesti zjutraj je sinova žena pisala meni in Debi in rekla, Danes zjutraj sem se zbudila ob šestih in vidim, torej vašega sina, mojega moža, kako na stolu, v kotu, z svetim pismom v roki moli in souze so jih tekle po obrazu, rekla je, to je nevedeten blagoslov, hvala vama, da ste mu to dala. Yes, so I think it's just examples of just, they will, they will see, they will feel, if you're living with the Lord, with your heart, And it's really who you are. Not perfect. You're not perfect. You're not without sin and failure. You repent of your sin. You're living an authentic relationship with Jesus. And it's in your heart. They'll feel it and they'll see it. 
otroci bodo torej prepoznali, videli bodo, začutili bodo, če zares živiš življenje z gospodom, če se kaj saš, če priznavaš svoje slabosti in če si v resničnem odnosu z Bogom, bodo to začutili. And so three other quick things. One is, um, I think a big, I think a big impact was Sunday mass for us as a family. We always made, we made Sunday special and we, and we never miss mass. And we didn't approach it like an unhappy obligation, but a joyful opportunity. Some days we didn't feel that way, but you still keep doing it, you know? In seveda pristopali smo pa k maši z radostjo. Tudi, če včasih morda nismo bili najboljše volje, ampak nismo pa pristopali k maši, kot da bi bila to neka duhomorna obveza, temveč z radostjo. Second, as I said earlier, we had regular spiritual conversations with them about things in life, challenges, questions, difficulties that would just come up in conversation at dinner. And we'd listen and try to explain why to help engage them. So. In torej na drugem mestu je to tisto, kar sem že prej povedal. Uh, veliko smo se z njimi duhovno tudi pogovarjali, poskušali smo jim na njihove na izzive, ki so jih sami izkušali v življenju, na ovire smo jim poskušali odgovoriti in ne samo odgovoriti, kako stvar rešiti, ampak resnično zakaj, zakaj je tako. Ja. Yeah. And um, Debbie and I committed that we were going to be one voice, not two. One voice on the essentials. One voice on the essentials. They can challenge us, but we're not going to divide in the conversation with them on the essentials. Torej, v osnovnih stvarih, glede, glede osnovnih stvari v družini, sva se zdaj bi dogovorila, da bova eno, da naj jo otroci ne morejo razdružiti, lahko seveda izzivajo, lahko nas preizkušajo, ne morejo pa nas razdružiti v tem, kar v osnovi misliva in kako živiva. And we encourage them to we encourage them to ask any question they wanted. No. Se vedno spodbujali smo jih da vedno vprašajo vsak karkoli so si pač želeli vprašati. Two other quick things one was teaching us teach them how to forgive all of us forgive each other repent and forgive that's big teach them that and live it yourself. Še dve stvari. Ja. Še dve stvari. Prvič, na prvem mestu, treba jih je naučiti, torej otroke treba naučiti odpuščati, kesati se in odpuščati v družini in seveda kaze, pokazati to s primerom. And then last, I could say many things, but the last thing I'll say here for time is we got them involved in dynamic missions. Torej, serving, the po- serving the poor, going to rallies, camps, these kinds of things, you know. Tako in v bistvu ta tretja stvar, lahko bi še veliko tega navedel, Tretja stvar je pa še ta, da smo jih vključevali v dobrodelnost. Torej, bili so dobrodelni, hodili smo tam, se pravi, misionarili so, bili so tam, kjer so ljudje potrebni pomoči in so pomagali. So that included, that gave them an opportunity for conversion moments, different stages of life, conversion moments and service of others, come outside themselves. In to jim je dalo priložnost za preobrnenje, za vsak, vsako vrstno spreobrnenje, se bo torej za določene stopnje v spreobrnenju in seveda občutek za druge ljudi, za pomoč. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Torej, naslednje vprašanje. Kako se spopadati s krizo in njihovim zavračanjem vere? So, Peter, how do you, how do you, how do you go through the crisis, the, 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 the difficult times and their rejection of faith or maybe their rebellion against faith? Yeah, um, we would say from the time they were young that until they leave the home, until they're, they're done with school and they're 18 years old, they're going to do what we as a family do. Torej, ena od stvari, ki smo jih že takoj upeljali in za katerimi smo stali je ta, otroci so od svojih malih nog do trenutka, ko so bili polnoletni in so lahko zapustili uh, torej svoje gnezdo, svojo hišo, so bili del in počeli tisto, kar smo mi kot družina počeli. And we understood that the time is coming when these all, all these decisions they will make for themselves and they'll live the way they want to live. 
In seveda zavedali smo se, da prihaja čas in prišel, vedno bo prišel čas, ko se bodo morali sami odločati in sami živeti svojo vero in svojo odločitve. But while they're in the home, ampak med tem, ko so doma še živeli in ko so bili pri nas, del družine, we expect them to be able to um, follow our leadership. Smo seveda pričakovali tudi to, da so se, torej, da so v, na nek način ubogali oziroma, da so sledili našemu vodstvu. And if, there, what, if they didn't, there would be consequences. In če niso ubogali poslušali oziroma niso sledili vod, našemu vodenju, našemu vodstvu, so seveda sledile posledice. And so we had to, we had to be wise in terms of determining the boundaries. Morali smo biti zelo modri uh, v določenju mej. And the consequences. In seveda tudi posledic. And then the rewards. In tudi nagrad. And, and that uh, we would reward um, if they if they were maturing, we would give them more responsibility. If they were being honest and maturing, they got more um, free choices, more responsibilities, more privileges, things like that. And so they earned those things. They earned our trust. Torej, ko so odraščali in ko so pokazali določeno mero zrelosti, smo jim lahko dali še nove odgovornosti, ampak seveda tudi več svobode v odločanju, več svobode v, tudi znotraj odgovornosti in na ta način smo v bistvu nagrajevali, tako da smo jih resno imali in vsakič, ko so na nek način dozoreli v neki zadevi, smo lahko potem še bolj resno pristopali oziroma več odgovornosti so lahko dobili. We had to be careful not to have too many rules Bili smo pozorni na to, da ne bi imeli tudi preveč pravil doma. And we had to be careful not to emotionally react and overreact to things. Morali smo tudi biti pozorni na to, da se ne odzivamo preveč čustveno, čustveno ali preveč čustveno na določene situacije. Or to threaten them with consequences, but not follow through with the consequences. That's a big mistake. Morali smo seveda tudi paziti na to, da če smo postavili določene meje in smo rekli, če, da bodo določene posledice, potem smo se morali tega tudi mi dobesedno držati. Nismo smeli popustiti. Ja, yeah. and I think um, I learned about myself, the more I learned to manage my own emotions, the more... Jaz sem se potem pri... Sorry, the... Peter, I'm sorry. No problem. The, the more I learned to manage my own emotions, the more effective I became. Torej, jaz sem se pa pri sebi seveda naučil, bolj kot sem lahko nadziral svoja čustva, um, uh, seveda dosti bolj učinkovit sem tudi sam bil. So there's many things I can say, you know, I, I learned a lot of hard lessons along the way. Lahko bi veliko, veliko stvari povedal, veliko lekcij sem tudi sam prejel, tudi težkih lekcij skozi leta. How I needed, I needed some things healed in my own life. Tudi jaz sem, torej odkril sem in pokazalo se je, da sem tudi sam potreboval ozdravljenje v svojem življenju. I needed to keep maturing. In nenehno sem tudi jaz moral zoreti. I needed to get help from other people. Jaz sem takrat ugotovil, da tudi jaz potrebujem pomoč drugih ljudi. So I could keep maturing as the disciple. Tako da sem lahko zorel kot učenec. And the more I change the better a, be, a better father I became. In seveda bolj kot sem bil spremenjen, bolj kot sem se spreminjal, zorel, boljši oče sem postajal. So I had great moments and some not so great moments. <laughs> lahko rečem, da sem imel uh, prekrasne čudovite uh, trenutke, pa tudi malo manj čudovite in prekrasne yeah. trenutke. Yeah. But the Lord the Lord heals many things, so Yeah. Gospod pa resnično ozdravi mnogo, mnogo stvari. Yeah. So. Thank you, Peter. Uh, torej, naslednje vprašanje. Kaj lahko cerkev stvari za izkušnjo Boga pri najstnikih? So the next, my next question is, what can the church do in the experience of God with teenagers? Yeah. Um, number one thing the church should do is do whatever they can to support, to support families. Prva stvar, ki bi jo cerkev morala storiti, in to storiti kakorkoli lahko, 
je to da bi morala potpirati družine. Preparing young men for marriage, preparing young women for marriage. Cerkev bi morala pripravljati mlade može, mlade pante za poroko in prav tako mlade punce dekleta. Supporting married men, supporting married women. Cerkev bi morala podpirati poročene može, poročene ženske. So very good men's events, very good marriage events, retreats, quality people, quality modeling, quality leadership, strength in families, strength in mom and dad. Torej, cirkev bi morala podpirati in seveda voditi dobre seminarje z dobrimi ljudmi, z dobrimi voditelji, dobro podpirati može, dobro podpirati očete in matere, se pravi ustvarjati resnično oziroma voditi ljudi in voditi... Sorry, sorry, Peter, just one, 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 if you can rewind... The first thing that she said, what the church should do, that was about good leaders or good support of... Uh... Yes, the church should invest in quality leadership in teaching, preaching. Cirkev bi morala v bistvu podpirati dobro učenje, poučevanje, dobro vodstvo, dobro oznanjanje Bože besede. Yes, um, find couples who can really help younger couples grow in the Lord. Cirkev bi morala v bistvu poskrbeti, da so, da najde oziroma prepozna zrele pare, ki lahko mladim parom pomagajo na poti za Kristusom. Make your preaching and your teaching, homilies, other things as pastors, make sure it is focused on strengthening families and speak to families in a way they can understand and they can be encouraged and challenged. Torej, cirkev bi morala poskrbeti, da tisto, kar uči, kar povčuje, s čemer podpira pare, je takšno, da izgrajuje, da utrjuje in resnično podpira pare v njihovi hoji za Kristusom. And make an investment as a parish to create mission opportunities, working with the poor, doing camps, retreats, where families can engage together with their children on mission. In cerkev bi morala poskrbeti tudi za misjone, torej za misjone z ljudmi, ki so pomoči potrebni, za brezdomce, tako da se lahko družine, torej starši in otroci vključujejo in pomagajo drugim ljudem. And make sure that you're introducing them at every age to Jesus, to a relationship with Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit and help them understand how to live in the Holy Spirit from a young young age, keep teaching them, keep teaching them and keep showing them. Torej, cirko bi morala nenehno vse, torej, ljudi vseh starosti poučevati v svetem duhu, že od malih nog, z resnično z učeni o Jezusu Kristusu v svetem duhu in jih izgrajevati od malih nog v hoji za Kristusom. Yes, and get some of your most talented people to help young people think through the problems they're facing. Teach on the things that impact kids' lives. In cirko bi moral v bistvu uporabiti svoje najpametnejše ljudi za to, da bi poučili mlade ljudi, da bi jim dali prave odgovore, kako se soočati s tvarmi, torej kako premagati stvari, s katerimi se soočajo. Cirko bi resnično morala vlagati v to, da bi pametni ljudje v bistvu podpirali mlade ljudi, kako premagati urire. And challenge the kid. The parish should be a place where people get supported and challenged to the radical call of following Jesus. It, it broke you up a little bit, Peter. Sorry. Okay. What did you say? I said, I said, yeah, the parish should be both a place where they, everyone in, experiences the encouragement, uh, the Lord of the Holy Spirit, but also the great challenge, challenge people to Sorry, follow the radical call of Jesus. Cerkev bi morala biti kraj, kjer ljudje seveda izkusijo svetega duha, podporo svetega duha, ampak tudi kjer izkusijo, kako jih sveti duh kliče, izziva, da bi hodili za radikalno, svej, da bi hodili po radikalni poti Jezusa Kristusa. Ja. And don't soften the gospel. In nikakor, cerkev, nikakor ne mehčaj evangelija. Ok. 
no? Thank you. So this is uh, our last question today. Uh, so what do you think? How do we evangelize teenagers today, Peter? Well, I think, I think some of the things I already shared, I would say you evangelize them, first of all, by living, the, living an evangelistic missionary life yourself. That you become, you, yeah, start there. Uh, torej, jaz nek, seveda, nekaj sem že povedal danes, kako naj bi uh, otrokom dejali vero. Seveda, prvič trebajo oznanjati prek samega sebe. Sami moramo najprej resnično živeti evangelij, evangelijsko vero. Yes, and so um, the best thing to do is create environments, cultures, environment of your family and other families with you and where, where the Lord is part of the conversation and prayer Vse and bolje, fellowship. Najbolje je torej ustvarjati vzdušja, ustvarjati skupnosti, ustvarjati vzdušje v družini, kjer je Jezus, kjer je Bog v bistvu del pogovora, kjer se o Bogu govori. Yeah, and engage, again, I can't say it enough, engage their questions, set in environments where they can ask any question they want and, and make sure we're giving them answers to their questions. Ne morem tega, ne morem tega dovolj ponoviti. Ne smemo se bati njihovih vprašanj. Moramo ustvariti vzdušje, kjer se bodo upali čisto vse vprašati in moramo biti pripravljeni poslušati in jim resnično prisluhniti in dati nek odgovor. And age specific experiences where they can encounter Jesus, that's younger age, middle, you know, junior high, high school, where they can encounter Jesus and give where their life are. to him again and again and again. Uh, with other people and then engaging in the direct mission work of the gospel. In v vsaki starosti, torej v vsaki starosti otroka, ki se razvija, moramo za vsako starost dati um, prilagojen, uh, torej prilagojen odgovor njim v določeni starosti, skozi osnovno šolo, srednjo šolo, pa vse dokler ne odrastejo, tako da vedno sproti dobivajo Jezusa Kristusa oziroma veselo sporočilo, veselo oznanilo tam, kjer so in jih tako pravzaprav pripravljamo za pravo vero in za misionarstvo. Yes, and, and teach them how to pray. Teach them how to read the Bible and teach them how to pray, starting at a very young age, uh, how they can have a relationship with Jesus, how can they come to live with Jesus. Teach them that uh, from the time they're very young. Seveda, od trenutka, ko so še zelo majhni mladi, jih je treba naučiti, moliti, brati svetopismo, vstopati v odnos z Jezusom Kristusom, da se tega naučijo že od malega. So, I have to, I have to leave because my family's waiting downstairs, but um, this has been wonderful to be with you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Peter. Torej, Peter nas mora zapustiti, čaka ga družina uh, in se seveda vsem zahvaljujemo za uh, danes, za, za mm, torej vsem gledalkam in gledalcem. Peter, could you just pray a little prayer for, for the end of this? Sure. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we trust in you. Gospod Jezus, tebi zaupamo. We thank you for our marriages and our children and our families. Zahvaljujemo se ti za svoje zakone, za svoje družine, za svoje otroke. Lord, we ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit on our lives, on our children, on our families. Gospod, prosimo te izjezdite Svetega Duha na naše življenje, na naše otroke, na naše družine. We ask you literally cast fire on our family, cast the fire of the Holy Spirit upon us. Mi te dobesedno prosimo, gospod, dobesedno izli ogen Svetega Duha na nas, na naše družine. And bring healing to our marriages and to our families. In gospod, ozdravi naše zakone, ozdravi naše družine. And reveal yourself to our children. In razodemi se našim otrokom. Give us wisdom and grace to lead them. Daj nam modrost in milost, da jih lahko vodimo. Come Holy Spirit. Pridi, Sveti Duh. In Jesus' name. V imenu Jezusa. Amen. Amen.